Hi, and welcome back to Gate Chill Crafts. I'm Rick. And I'm Sarah. And today we're going to be talking a bit about our trip to Portland, Maine last week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we went up to celebrate Rick's birthday. Happy birthday! Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, our favorite band, one of our favorite bands, Mo, was happy to be playing on Rick's birthday at the State Theater, and so we thought, good enough excuse. Um, we really liked it when we went uh, a few years ago. And so we decided to go back and revisit some old haunts and try some new things. Yeah, exactly. We, um, As always, we find a place we like to stay, and we usually stay there. But then we try to mix it up a bit. And so with this trip, we went to some old favorites and tried some new things. Mm -hmm. Yep, so we got in. We had lunch. Remind me. We went to Foulmouth Brewing oh, in right. South Portland and had a wonderful lunch with a uh, flight of their beers, mm -hmm. um, which was Plenty of beer, especially at lunchtime, and they had some really nice uh, items there. They did, yeah. We liked their IPA selection. Um, they had a red, it was like a red Kolsch. Yeah, they somebody, messed it up. Somebody, somebody messed up. <laughs> somebody effed up the thing. All of their stuff is sort of like bleeped out swear words because it is foul-mouthed, not foul-mouth. Um, yeah, so it was somebody bleeped up the order was the name of the beer, and then... <laughs> yeah, so it was a Kolsch that was a little redder. It was, mm -hmm. well, significantly redder than any Kolsch should be, but it was excellent. Mm -hmm. My favorite was probably the Gruit. Yeah, Gruit, Gritty Pebbles. <laughs> gritty Pebbles, yes. <laughs> it was excellent. I agree. That was, um, it was tangy, but not super sour. It wasn't like drinking a glass of lemon juice. Yeah. Um, which I've mentioned on, on the show before that I don't like super-duper sour beers, but it was a nice... Refreshing one, oh, great. Um, and it had a well-rounded. I, I feel like there was like a bitter aftertaste or something that kind of cut through. Correct, but not nearly as astringent as one that has like wormwood or something else in it. Right. This was really drinkable, and I I probably would drink a lot of it during the summer. But it was my favorite of the six or seven that we tried there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also really like that dark stout that they had. Oh, that was good. That was very good. I think that was chef's breakfast, but mm -hmm. apologies. We'll have to follow or go to my untapped reviews or my untapped page just to see what we did because we've probably forgotten a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and if you don't know, untapped is a social networking uh, application and website for um, keeping track of your beers that you taste. And we'll link to Rick's untapped in the show notes for this episode. Yeah. yeah. Um, so then, the food was really good as well. Mm -hmm. We had a great time there. Yeah. And we didn't have either of these there because they're a brew pub Don't correct worry. we're going to taste some beers on camera in just a second yeah <laughs> so from there we went to um we went to uh port fiber yeah i got to see casey. casey um casey the i call her the the dancing uh, yarn shop owner <laughs> um port fiber is not really a yarn shop per se it is more as the title implies fiber related so it's more um she has a lot of fibers that she dyes here's one example mm -hmm. something that i bought so this is a Polworth and Silk blend of um, roving that she dyed herself. I just love these colors. Um, yeah, you can see that goes very well with the Well, I was going to say, like, Rick and Casey were both helping me pick out colors, and it was one of those, like, should I get this, like, bright pink and purple thing? It's like, but you don't wear that color, Sarah. You should get the colors that you wear. So it's like, yeah, grays and blues. <laughs> Pretty. I like Back that. Back to my usual thing. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. yeah. Go There's a little works. green, you know, a little greenish yellow in there. That'll that'll help mix, and, mix me up a little bit. <laughs> as as, as uh, Casey said, it brings out your eyes, and I can Aww. see that right now. <laughs> yeah. So um, so this is lovely. I wish I wish there was touch of vision because it's so soft and lofty. Um, Casey does a really good job. I, I've seen fiber in this kind of preparation before, and what happens is the braid can get really compacted and sort of tough, and then it's not very pleasant to try to spin it, mm. but um, she's done a really nice job of keeping it nice and lofty. So I'm trying not to handle it too much before I work with it because I want it to stay nice Good and point. fluffy. So yeah. got that from her. Um, but like I was saying, her her shop focus is more on felting, she said, is her number one. Um, she, she caters to spinners. She has a great um, program where you can rent spinning wheels, which I think is awesome because then you can try out different models and see if you're really in the market for a spinning wheel. Mm -hmm. um, she has weaving classes, and then she does have a small selection of yarn. And the main yarn that she has is this one, um, which is called, uh, it's well, it's a Cash Gora base. It's Cash Gora People Yarns is the brand. And um, each skein has a person associated with it. And these are all hand spun um, overseas and by women who, you know, really need extra income. They, they may not have as many educational opportunities. They don't have as many opportunities to work outside the home. 
often the husbands are away in Russia um, for long stints of time. And so these women can go and spend this yarn and then they have spending money to buy things for their household, to support their children's education and all that. So that's really important. Yeah. And this is so luxuriously soft. Again, my teal color, <laughs> but oh, it's like kitten soft. It's really good. So early birthday presents for me. Um, Rick and I's birthdays are a month apart. Mm -hmm. So I splurged a little bit and got some stuff for myself. So, but it was fun. It was really fun to see Casey's shop. It was. It's much bigger. And it, well, it, it would have to be considering all the space that she does dance around in. Mm. But it did. It was a lot bigger than I anticipated. And it was great to see all the, the looms and all the weaving equipment, etc. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, just, yeah, very nice. It's a, a, in a neighborhood that we had been in before to explore some uh, brewing in the past. And it was nice to visit her. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So, um, didn't get a chance to sit down for an interview, which I'd hoped for, but that's okay. Um, we'll put some photos in as we're talking about her shop, and uh, and hopefully we'll get to interview her at some point in the future. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. So from there we got to go check into our little hotel. No, we stopped by Lone Pine oh, Brewing first, that's had right. some beers. It was still er right. too early to check into our lovely inn. Yeah, it was still only like three o'clock by this point. <laughs> we schedule so many things, and we think, oh, we're not going to do half of it, and then we we sort of finish an activity, and it's like. Well, that only took an hour. What are we going to do now? I'll drink more beer. <laughs> yeah, the entire trip that we took was only 57 hours, so we packed mm. a lot into it. And you're going to see in the show notes below, or actually when you click through to the blog, uh, we will have links to the various fiber places, the places we ate, the places we drank, all sorts of different things. So, uh, you know, please keep up that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. So after we left Port Fiber, we took a quick drive over to Lone Pine Brewing, which is just around the corner. And it is this is actually not a, a brew pub. It is a tasting room. And as they told us, they uh, kind of went on to bigger things. And so this tasting room doesn't have any brewing on site, but it's a it feels a little bit like a dorm room common space, as you said. So yeah. it doesn't have a lot of great atmosphere, but it has a lot of great beers. And so we had some of those. Right. Yeah. The just to be clear, the, the brewery didn't move on to bigger, better things. They just expanded outside of town. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. They're still in Portland, but they're not in the city center anymore because they're not in the small space. Right. Um but they kept this location for a tasting room. Right. Um, so Lone Pound, you could, you could do with a spruce up <laughs> of your tasting room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the furniture was not in great repair, but the beer was pretty good. So, yeah. and then we Speaking tried which, a few things and I don't remember if we, we did not try this. We did not so try this, this is a blind tasting. This is their beer tessellation mm -hmm. and it is a mosaic double India pale ale. Yep. And I noticed on their beer menu, they had the tessellation with a lot of different um, fruit juices added to it. So they had different fruit uh, variations on this beer, but this is the one without any fruit in yeah. it. So. Nice and clear. Yeah, very clear. And nice and busy. It's got like a champagne bubble going on. Yeah, it's got a much low, smaller bubble than the next beer we're going to try. Mm -hmm. It's got a mango, mm -hmm. passion fruit. It, it smells fruity, but it's not. Well, almost it's like the mango. It reminds me of the Mango Tango by uh, mm -hmm. Newman's. I'm pretty sure it's just the hops, yeah. Oh, that's lovely. That is lovely. Mmm. Refreshing. Yeah. Oh, that's really good. Oh, slightly creamy head, too. The head's, like, sticking around. Yeah, we poured these a little bit before we went on the air, and they've really held up. And, mm. and Sarah said, good lacing. Look at that. Oh, that's, like, that's kind of dangerously chuggable, actually. <laughs> that's really good. I it is 8.1%. I'm, just, I'm really thirsty, so. <laughs> But I'm really thirsty. Don't 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 chug your beer. Don't chug your eight point one percent beer. No, don't Save chug it. your don't chug your craft beer at all. Mm -hmm. Sip it moderation. That's really okay. Good. I'm gonna put that down. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, and I'm trying to think of what else we had there that we liked particularly. Uh, let's I'm see. Back in my brains. Yeah, again, I'd have to check my untapped. But they we tried a number of things. Uh, I think we tried four. Uh, we were relatively pleased with most of them, but I don't remember mm -hmm. uh, anything that stood out specifically. Ooh. I do remember. The, my favorite, I think, there was the unicorn beer. Something called unicorn something. And it was a cloudy, we're going to taste a cloudy, hazy uh, New England style IPA in just a minute, and it was that style. Hmm. Yeah. Again, I'd have to check my notes. Yep. 57 hours, Pretty and sure. it was a week ago. It was. <laughs> so, Yeah. Whatever that unicorn sparkle, whatever it was called, it was really unicorn good. Unicorn sparkle. Yeah. 
I don't know. Um, it was anyway, a cool. It was beers. a cool vibe. I mean, I, I hate to brag on places, um, but yeah, they do need to fix up their furniture. But it was a cool vibe. There was a group in there, um, and one of the people had a little dog with them, and the, the dog was going around getting pets. And, yeah, 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 and they had water like set up for animals. And as mm -hmm. she said, it was like some broken. It felt like a lot of broken leather chairs and things like that. But it started to pick up. This was a Friday afternoon. Some people were getting off work a little early and starting right. their long weekend a little early. Mm -hmm. But it was a good vibe. Uh, really nice staff and yeah. Yep. Yeah, nice bartender and you know, kind of a younger younger than us crowd. I felt like too. So, but hey, yeah. that's a good. So, so. so then, then we, from there we went to our hotel. Right? Yeah, we <laughs> checked into the Inn on Carlton, which is our favorite place in Portland, Maine, and it's a do go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's a, a lesser known place. I, I compared it with, um, there's another sort of boutique hotel chain that we are, we're on their newsletter subscription. So I get coupons and things and like, oh, book your, you know, book your vacation six months in advance and you get 20% off your rooms and stuff. They were all filled up and their rooms were a lot more expensive, even with the sale prices. Yeah. Um, I think the Inn on Carlton is a really good deal. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's a Victorian um, uh, building, mm -hmm. an Italianate uh, Victorian with Beautiful individual rooms en suite, well decorated in period pieces too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lots of antique furniture, a really nice common area downstairs um, to, to lounge and sit in. And um, the host cooks breakfast, hot breakfast every morning, so it's not just a continental, you know, cold cereal and bagels kind of affair. Um, and uh, he was really nice, Jim. Jim, Jim Smith. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's not on site, so you do have to make sure that if you need anything, you're kind of coordinating with him about when you're checking in or hmm. or what your special needs might be. Hmm. But, um, you know, in terms of the, the accommodation and the location, it's very walkable. We, we managed to park and walk to most things um, this weekend and the last time we were there. So. Yeah, although both times we were there was in February, and this time is shortly after a, a storm. That is probably the only complaint I had about this trip is that um, – the sidewalks weren't very well maintained. We mm -hmm. spent a lot of our time walking in bike lanes and in the middle of the road just to avoid the very, very slippery uh, sidewalks. Yeah, thick ice that had accumulated because people weren't shoveling. And so, of course, when it, you know, it melts and it condenses down into ice. I, come on, Portland, get with it. Shovel your sidewalks when it's snow. Yeah, and then we won't have this problem. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I mean, for a, a for a town that's mostly built on tourism, I'm just uh, I'm not sure who's responsible for that. It seems to me that ultimately, you know, that maybe it's both the town and the the, the people, the property owners, the property yeah. owners. But it was quite treacherous in mm -hmm. some places. Uh, but uh, there were definitely times where I'm lying and told you. I said I'd rather fall. I'd rather get hit by a car than fall and hit my head on the sidewalk. So. <laughs> Yeah, you might have a I'm chance. I'm gonna walk in the, the road. Car. I'm gonna walk in the road. <laughs> yeah. Don't see me. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. So the the inn was great, and then we went to a new restaurant that yeah. you had found. Um, how did you find it? Did you you just mapping stuff? Yeah, and you'll see that the, on the blog post there is a a map again of the places we've been, not only on this trip but on a previous trip. Um, I have a tendency to kind of open maps and look around and then click on things and see what's in Google and see what's in their own websites. I don't have a don't often go to things like Yelp or TripAdvisor. I, I just mm -hmm. you know, I get those the comment sections in those are just they're confusing <laughs> and I don't always think that they're accurate. I mean yeah. if you do go to any of the sites, throw away all the one stars, throw away all the five stars and look in the three and four. And mm -hmm. if you get enough of those, you'll be happy. But no, I guess I do a virtual tour. I plop down and, oh, what's in this neighborhood? Oh, okay, here's a good restaurant. This gets good reviews. Let's consider that. Mm -hmm. And then we have a group of considered places in each one of the little neighborhoods, and then we can decide there. Right. Um, but this was a um, new to me and completely kind of a guess as to whether or not it be any good. The reviews look good, and mm -hmm. we were pleased. Yeah, well, anything farm to table is kind of like a light bulb thing. It's like, ooh, okay, at least the ingredients are going to be like regional and fresh. Yeah. And when you're working with fresh ingredients when you're cooking, that's, I, I'd say that's 80% of the battle right there. If you can just not mess it up, just kind of cook it gently and not mess it up, yeah. then it's going to taste really good. Yeah. Oh, my God, the food was so good. So the place is named, priced. Yeah. Oh, extremely reasonably priced. It's oh. a bistro called Isa, I-S-A. And again, mm -hmm. we'll have the link to them in the show notes. And it was a small little bistro. It had a very much a French kind of feel. Mm -hmm. um, small table. Seemed to cater to couples. There were a lot of two tops. Mm -hmm. And we just had a 
fabulous, fabulous time. Yeah, um, unfortunately on Friday evening I was not feeling very well and so it was, my body was telling me don't drink alcohol. So I ended up with hot tea for dinner, but the cocktails kept coming by our table and I kept sort of drooling like, oh, I really want one of those that looked yeah. really good. Well, the teas uh, even, they made their own tea bags, so they made their own blends of teas and Sarah really liked the one she had. It was a green tea. It was supposed to have licorice in it, but it wasn't overwhelmingly mm -hmm. licorice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. ginger, ginger licorice. Yeah, it was really nice. Um, and they had a decent beer selection and mostly mm -hmm. local beers. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had an Austin Street IPA and it was mm -hmm. excellent. It went very well with my bolognese. And the food there was amazing. And not overwhelming portions, but um, just so good. Every Everything kind of melt in your mouth. Unctuous, delicious. Not overwhelmingly heavy, but certainly nice and satisfying. Right. You had the mm -hmm. rabbit. I, I had, had the rabbit, bolognese. Rabbit over, over the homemade pasta stuff. Oh, that was really good. Mine was like a stewed rabbit in tomato sauce. And yeah, bolognese. And I had French silk. Pie for dessert <sighs> with a homemade ice cream as well, which was which was almost like marshmallow. It was so thick, like it was kind of melting on my plate, but it, all it did was sort of you know change shape. <laughs> it didn't like completely melt because it was so rich. Yeah, it was good. It was good. It was amazing. Well, um, yeah, and after our very long day at that point, we just decided to kind of walk back and have a quiet evening mm -hmm. back at the hotel mm -hmm. and get a fresh start. Yep. So. The next morning, we had our breakfast, our catered breakfast at the hotel. That was nice. We had pecan waffles, which are <laughs> my favorites. Um, and then we headed out to the museum, the Portland Museum of Art, which oh, what we didn't really have expectations going there, except get out of the cold and go get some culture. But yeah. surprisingly... Wow. Which depth of collection? It was quite busy, too. They, mm -hmm. I was surprised. We queued up for a bit to get in. It was a reasonable admission fee. And they had a special thing going on where they were doing flower arrangements that were inspired by various pieces of art. Mm -hmm. So you would go into each individual rooms and then you might see a flower arrangement uh, that was meant as to be an inspiration from a piece of artwork. And mm -hmm. it was really a clever way to do that. Yeah, Portland and Bloom. Um, that, was, that was very cool to see how each flower arranging company, I think they had, you know, free range to do whatever they wanted with their arrangements. That was really neat. Um, we also they had some art of the of the Caribbean, mm -hmm. um, which was a special exhibition that they were doing. That was really cool, and I really liked the photography. Oh right, oh, um, and I'm blanking on his name, Patrick. Richard Avenden. Yes, um, um, which was pretty cool. He had shot a lot of very famous people, including politicians, actors, um, people from the art world, mm -hmm. and but got them in some really unconventional poses yeah. and some very candid photography yeah um which was great to see um yeah the duke yeah. and duchess of york they had humphrey bogart windsor. there was oh, i'm sorry of uh, windsor i'm <laughs> sorry uh duke and duchess of windsor um and they had uh, humphrey bogart and uh, marilyn monroe mm -hmm. which was a haunting photograph there was the um uh, uh, andy warhol and his group there was just mm -hmm. yeah yep yep a lot of interesting stuff the bear uh, family mm -hmm. um, of the fam the famous aspirin magnate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. This yeah. what surprised me most is there's something for everybody. So there was photography, there was sculpture, there was gorgeous paintings, and some by some of the most famous in the world. There Masters. was Picasso, P uh, Matisse. There was Mary Cassatt. There was a Renoir. Uh -huh. was, wow. <laughs> yep. Yep. They had a lot of the the big names, which again we weren't. We thought this was a time kill and it ended up being one of the highlights of the trip. Absolutely. Yep. And I was expecting more sort of like local artists or something else. I wasn't really sure. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a preconceived notion and I didn't do much research on what their collection was. Yeah. So um, that was a great, great surprise and certainly worth the investment in the ticket price. Yeah. And it was right yeah. downtown too. So mm -hmm. you were right around all the other things that we were already going to be doing. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's a great time. Yep. Um, and we wandered around until we were really hungry. <laughs> Really, <laughs> really, really hungry, and so we we bugged out and we went to the Thirsty Pig, which was another um, brew pub that you had identified, kind of highlighted, yeah. yeah, and wanted to go to. Um, and the, this place was so packed on a Saturday afternoon, so you know it was pretty good, and there was a lot of different people there and live music. That was good. Mm -hmm. They do their, I guess, claim to fame seems to be that they do um, 
a lot of their own sausage making. So this is one of their stickers that we picked up mm -hmm. from the Thirsty Pig. Yep. And as, as the name implies, uh, it's a lot of pork-based fare. So again, not super vegetarian friendly, although they did have some vegetarian options. Yeah. Um, I, I'm giving big props to a lot of restaurants now. When I was growing up, I was a strict vegetarian and if it was a barbecue place or something like that, you would never, you wouldn't even be able to eat any of the side dishes because yeah. they would all have bacon or something in them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of places now, um, even if they're sort of meat centric restaurants, they mm -hmm. will always have like at least one vegan thing. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. excuse me, that Portland, Maine in general has a has a strong vegan community, it so does. you are going to find a lot of vegan stuff. Right. Yeah. So, but yeah, we let, it was a bit of a, a fray to like get a seat and figure out you know, how to order food and all that, but the staff were good. Um, yeah. It's like semi-table service. You stand in line to order, but then they'll bring the food over to you. Um, and we, we each had, we each started off with an IPA. Yeah, we tried two different ones from Bissell Brothers, which we yeah. had visited the previous time at their old location. We did not visit this trip, but they're well known as far as their IPAs. They essentially do a lot of IPAs. When we mm -hmm. visited them in two, uh, 2015, it was almost predominantly IPAs. Mm -hmm. So we had two IPAs by them that we liked. Yep. And then um, we had their Euro, which was a version of, uh, instead of like the shaved lamb um, yeah. off of the rotisserie thing, um, it was a lamb sausage, uh, yeah, which was excellent. excellently prepared yeah. with like lots of nice pickles and fresh vegetables on the sandwich as well. And their coleslaw, their sesame mm, coleslaw mm -hmm. was no mayonnaise, vinegar really based. good vinegar based. That was excellent. Yeah, yeah, that was really good. And then we each had another follow up beer and I know I got something dark. You did. In fact, I doing. think you got something from Definitive, which we're going to taste in a couple of moments. So maybe that would be a good time. So you got a dark beer from Definitive. I forget what yes. their name was. And then you got, we got halves of something. Oh, and I got a, a Saison. You got a Sour Saison. Oh, yeah. 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 That was very that good, was really too. Good as well. But oh my God, my Definitive beer. That was probably the best beer of the trip for me. Yeah. It was, it was so good. Yeah, that was an Imperial Stout. It so was. yeah, it was a gorgeous Imperial yeah. Stout. And it was the first time you've ever even heard of Definitive Brewing. Um, so we, when we walked across the street to Navarre Res, which is another brew pub, Mm -hmm. That has a great selection of um, of draft beers, but they have a huge bottle collection as well. An mm -hmm. overwhelming bottle collection. It remind me a little bit of the Brick Skeller uh, in D.C. before its demise, where mm -hmm. you had 800 or something bottles on uh, to choose from as well. And overwhelmed by that selection, I decided to try something else from Definitive, since we just had a great experience. And an IPA from them was, again, one of the best beers we had had. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was good. Navari Res had... I saw people ordering food. I, it didn't look amazing, but, you know, I hate to be a judge without tasting things. It looks sort of like run-of-the-mill pub grub. Um, but as Rick said, they had a huge, huge beer menu. And um, that would be, I think it would be a cool place to go for like a first or second date, maybe. Because they had like shuffleboard and they had... Like different kinds of places to sit, lots of interesting stuff on the walls, you know. So I feel like it's like one of those kind of hangout places. I got into this, um, it's it's kind of a warren. It's slightly underground and there's like a bunch of different rooms. And I was um, trying to find the restroom. And on my way back, I sort of got trapped in this little room with three moms with strap-on babies. <laughs> it was almost like being in a video game with non-player characters that you keep yeah. bumping into. <laughs> sort of funny so I was like trying to get out of this little room but anyway there was a lot there was a like mix in ages and mm -hmm. um I yeah, thought it would be a great place to fun. just go and meet people they it was one of those things where it's kind of collective tables and mm -hmm. shared tables and I got the impression that you could just sit down and have a nice conversation with somebody randomly yeah and we saw some really groups of friends like either work groups or groups of friends meeting you know five mm -hmm. six people just kind of hanging out so and they looked to have a great beer garden. Of course, it was covered in snow and ice, but really yeah. sharp, vibrant colors. It looks like they may have had some uh, street artist uh, come in and do some work on the fencing, and it looked really inviting. So mm -hmm. we've already sworn that the next time we're going to go to Portland that we're going to go when it's warmer. Most It's not going to be February. <laughs> it's not going to be in February. I mean, granted, this trip was because we wanted to go see Mo, right. and it happened to be around my birthday. But mm -hmm. I think the next time I'd like to give Portland, Maine a try in warmer climates because yeah. there are a lot of great outdoor things to it's do. It's going to be busier and more expensive, but, you know. 
ever. It'll, it'll be nicer yeah. too. Yeah, Navari Res. I wish I'd had my knitting with me because that was definitely like oh, kind of a great spot to a sit chill in. and sip and stitch kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We already had plans to go other places, so we didn't. Uh, and we also couldn't be drinking too much in the middle of the afternoon and not with the concert coming up later. We didn't want to be falling asleep. <laughs> Can I go home for a nap? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was fun. Well, um, speaking of which, while we're talking about Definitive, why don't we go ahead oh, and try yeah. this beer? Let's do that. I'm going to take a sip Yeah, of go ahead and take a sip of that. So Definitive Brewing, um, we stopped by. We liked them so much that we stopped by on Sunday when we were leaving and stopped by for some cans. Mm -hmm. Now, this is one of their cans. This is the beer we're going to be trying. And a DDH is a double dry hopped beer. And it is called Behind the Light. And it's 7.4%. Uh, so yeah. I don't know much more what about hops it. It, it does not. Like I'll have to do some more research into that. Um, but yeah. some places list them so anyway, this is from Definitive Brewing, and it's behind the light. Yeah. A lot more uh, hazy, more of a double IPA, a New England style, perhaps. Yeah. I should say it looks like orange juice. And it has that orange juice smell. And but also orange some juice. melon too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, it's like a brunch cocktail. Mm. Yeah, it's almost good. like a mimosa. Mm -hmm. It's very good. Mm. They make good beers. I was unfamiliar with them, and now it is going to be the place I uh, tell people when you're going to Portland, Maine, to try them. Absolutely. Can't miss. Um, we liked every. We loved everything that we tried from them, and that's rare. Um, it's, it's rare for a place to hit the mark for your personal taste. I mean, everybody's taste, everybody's mm -hmm. palate is different, right? Yeah. So it's rare for a place to hit the mark, I feel like, mm -hmm. on every style of beer that they do. Well, um, speaking of which, we we aren't we don't have them in front of us here. We did try one other beer from Definitive that we brought home. So we we paired it with donuts. Right. They had a what they called Vanilla Dome, which was a strawberry milkshake IPA. Mm -hmm. And when we came back, we had some, a raspberry holy cannoli from the uh, Holy Donut, mm -hmm. and we paired it with that. And we paired one of their chocolate donuts with a foundation. Uh, milk stout. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have had some other beers we're not going to taste on camera, but that was the other one, the definitive, that we really enjoyed. Right. And the the milkshake beers, um, we've mentioned here before, but those are brewed with lactose. Um, so like you would brew a milk stout, but then they're branching off into these other, um, like pairing it with an IPA or pairing it with a Saison or something else to give a more creamy mm -hmm. feel. Yeah, we're definitely going to try flavor. some of those this summer. We want to brew something along mm -hmm. those lines. Maybe... Um, maybe modify one of our other uh, recipes. Mm -hmm. For yeah. example, that uh, the Huel beer that we, we mentioned and we uh, we brewed and we have in one of the videos, right. um, that would lend itself very well to a milkshake style beer because it had that melon and strawberry mm -hmm. kind of nose from the yeah. hops. Make a creamsicle beer, right? <laughs> yeah. Yummy. That seems to be what a lot of people are doing with that. Right. And I, I like the style a lot. Yeah. Um, beer trends come and go and styles, yeah. you know, come in and go out and it's nice to... When you discover a hot trend, then you're like, yeah, I, I can really get behind this. So yeah, Definitive Brewing, I would absolutely, absolutely recommend them. I want to briefly talk to them when you said about the mm -hmm. about beers that end up being kind of trendy. But the great thing about if you learn how to homebrew mm -hmm. is that even if somebody else isn't making those trendy beers and you end up that you like those trendy beers, you can continue to make those beers mm -hmm. the way you like them if you, that's the case. That's right. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking about so-called black IPA or... Mm -hmm. or um, India black ale. India whatever, black ale, right. whatever that... You know, three, four years ago, that was the rage and everybody... Every brewery was making one. And yeah. now you don't see them very much on the menus anymore. But, yeah. you know, if you learn how to make it, you can do it at home. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> so then we decided to kind of go back to the hotel, freshen up a little bit, mm -hmm. and get ready for our evening out for music... But we went back to one of our absolute favorite places. Yeah. And this is Bao Bao. Um, and they're right downtown near the State Theater. Um, and they're a Japanese-inspired um, restaurant. They have um, a lot of Japanese um, small dishes, small plates. Mm -hmm. And then they have uh, <laughs> Japanese Chinese-style dumplings, oh. them, which are just incredible. And, and again, small plates, so you can kind of try a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and oh, I'm still hungry, I'll have a little bit more. And Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and great craft cocktails, they mm -hmm. have local beers, great staff, they're very attentive and they know what they're doing. Yes, good staff, they, the staff can tell you all about not only the food, but um, all the local liquors that they have on their full bar, all of the local beers that they have in their beer cellar. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah. Now, so this is a place that is place. always busy. It's so, always busy and they don't take reservations. Correct. So its recommendation is you go maybe half hour before you actually feel like you need to eat. Go in. They'll take your phone number. And then you just go around the corner to the little tap house like we do. Mm -hmm. Get a beer. Enjoy the beer. And then wait for the phone call or the text message. And go over and enjoy some amazing dumplings. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, again, reasonably priced. And I think it would be a good place for a date. Oh, it'd be a great place for a date. Um, whether you know your date very well or don't know them very well, <laughs> I think it would be fun. Yeah. A fun location. I was that. people watching a lot. And I saw some people who seemed to be on first or second dates and there was a lot of enjoyable. You're sharing food, which is always a good idea when you're there. You get to talk about which things you like, which things you might not like. And then sharing food, I think, mm -hmm. is a great way to have a date. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So that was a fun one. And then on to the State Theater, which is an amazing venue. Um, it has a very checkered past. I understand it used to be a movie theater, and then it used to be a special kind of a movie theater, if you know what I mean. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, but it's like a 19-teens uh, Rococo revival kind of setting inside, and they've maintained a lot of the historic elements of the building and the, the, you know, the trim work and the artwork. Um, and there's not a bad seat in the house either. No, and the acoustics are really, really wow. good. So um, I I enjoyed that. It was weird being in a sit-down concert for a rock band. Mo is a, um, what do I want to say, improvisational rock, um, a la The Grateful Dead, a la Fish, a la Gee. all those. Sometimes called jam band. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it was a little strange, um, sort of dancing at your seat, but it was also nice. <laughs> To be able to sit down if you wanted to. Yeah. We don't usually have that option when we go to, you know, higher ground or some of the local venues here in, yeah. in Vermont. Um, but yeah, it was a fun concert. It was a great show. And I a big shout out to my wonderful wife. So she got the band to wish me a happy birthday from the stage. One of the great things about Mo is that they're really, really in touch with their 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 uh, their fans. And so just before the encore, uh, Al the one of the guitarist reads out some of the notes so it's like happy 53rd birthday to rick or this is so and so's 150th show or mm -hmm. so and so got engaged and it's it's just it's just a lot of fun yeah. it is yeah. yeah and i didn't even know how to like go about doing this and i don't think half the security staff at the venue knew because <laughs> you know they're not traveling with the band they're just there for the venue so right. Um, but fortunately, some woman in the front row was like, are you trying to get a note to Al? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and she's like, I'll give it to him. I was like, thanks. Yeah. So thank you, random woman. I doubt you're watching, but <laughs> I really appreciate that. No, it was a great, it was a great time. But it, you're right. When you were talking about the security there, it's another thing. It's, you know, some places just are too over secure and this place allowed aggressive. you to, yeah, aggressive, downright, don't get in your seats. Don't do that. But they allowed people to mill about, just mm -hmm. go onto the floor, dance in the aisles, and everybody was considerate. And just a really fun show. And it I, was. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. So thanks, Mo. Thanks, Mo. Appreciate you guys. Um, yeah, and then we we toddled on home and hit the hay. Um, so it was late. Yeah. We were past our bedtime. <laughs> well so. past. Well, again, it's it's we started early. We go all day. We've been walking all day. We've been eating and drinking in the middle of the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Cut us some slack. Yeah. We did well. We did I'm well. Old. We stayed we stayed through we stayed through the encore. It's all good. We did. Um yeah, and so then the next morning we got an early start um and um uh, popped off to uh, the knitting nook, which oh, right. is a new place nice. in South Portland, and I'm not gonna tell you a ton about it because I actually got to interview the um owner. Lisa, um, and uh, and so that's going to be a separate interview episode next week. Yeah, but you um, did get some yarn from her. I did get some so yarn. So we'll get a little preview here. Yeah. So um, these are the. This is Juniper Moon. Oh, I'm sure the yeah, Juniper Moon, um, which if you're a, if you're a fan of luxury fibers, you're probably familiar with Juniper Moon. This is alpaca, and um, this is their fingering weight, and this combination Grello. Um, of this sort of acidy yellow and uh, gray is kind of all the rage and has been for the, a little while now. It's been a trend. Mm -hmm. So I've been wanting to knit something um, in this color combination. This is a color that is a little scary by itself, this chartreuse. Um, but I think with the gray, I can make it work with my wardrobe. So I'm looking forward to knitting these two. And um, 
If you are visiting Portland, I highly recommend checking out the Knitting Nook. Lisa is a very sweet person. Um, it's a cafe slash knitting shop. It was so inviting. It, it is super inviting and comfy. Um, so half of it's a cafe. You can go in and get a hot or cold beverage. She has a liquor license, so you can get a glass of wine or yeah, a glass cheese of Cheese plates that she was putting out with local cheeses and sandwiches. sandwiches. All kinds of stuff um, that she makes there. And yeah. then, of course, knitting. Um, they have a lot of workshops that they're doing, so um, so check it out. And if you're you know cruising through, they do have Maine yarns, so you can um, get a souvenir or skein to take home with you. But yeah, um, we really enjoyed it, and we met some other knitters who happened to come in during the interview session um, that were from the area, and you know we're just friends meeting up, um, and they were really nice too. So. Well, and that's what I meant about it, it was very inviting. There's mm -hmm. a, I know there's some folks that are feeling that sometimes that their uh, their local knitting store might not feel as welcoming. Lisa does a very good job of doing that, and we had a fabulous time not only meeting her but meeting some of her new her customers. And they were mm -hmm. so friendly and inviting and welcoming. I you know, I you know I'm not a knitter, but I'm certainly kind of gregarious and outgoing. And they were just so welcoming. Had so many questions for me. It wasn't just ignore. That's the the knitter spouse. They were engaging to me, and I really appreciated that. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like it's a place that you could go with your current project and just chill for an afternoon and not yes. feel pressured to leave or to do anything in particular just hang exactly. out and enjoy the space so. and the space is light and very airy mm -hmm. and very welcoming and i think it's a good place to do your knitting it's got good absolutely lighting. it yeah. does yep yep and it's in a neighborhood so you know again you don't feel like you're a tourist on main street when you're there you feel like you're kind of one of the yeah of the group it so. is off the beaten path as far as like portland maine proper mm -hmm. uh, it is in south portland but Every place in that area is very approachable. It's very easy to get to. It is. Yeah. You know, from our downtown, it was like a 10-minute drive. Mm -hmm. It looks on the map like it's very far away. It's not. It's no. not. Yeah. Easy to get to, you know, plenty of street parking, mm -hmm. um, very accessible. So, yeah. And maybe go and, like I said, have something that there and then maybe stop by the Foul Mouth Brewing on your way back, which is also a South Portland. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Make do, a little, do a little tour. Cool. Yes, yeah, so we did that, and then we did our ritual uh, visit to Holy Donut, of course, and um, that was <sighs> overwhelming, <laughs> but good. <laughs> the, the staff do a good job of like moving the line through and getting everybody in and out of there pretty efficiently. Yeah. yeah, this is a very popular place that they've learned how to make sure that it works very smoothly for everybody. So they expect you to like they give you the tutorial, they give you the rundown, which is be ready. Start with how many you're going to have and then be prepared to kind of tell people what you want. And they do a great job also of suggestions and things like that. So yeah. we came, we put together a half dozen of some of the most amazing potato donuts mm -hmm. ever. Yeah. They're very dense. They're very rich um, potato donuts, but we liked them. And they yeah. did pair really well with our beers. That was kind of an impromptu. Nobody felt like cooking after a four hour drive back. <laughs> home uh after a long weekend um so we just ended up having donuts and beer <laughs> <laughs> which started off as a joke but then it was perfect so we'd had that that vanilla dome which was the strawberry milkshake beer paired very well as i said with the raspberry hula cannoli and then we had mm -hmm. a chocolate dark chocolate sea salt caramel donut no paired, caramel just nope just sea salt, salt and chocolate sea yeah, salt yeah. and chocolate mm -hmm. and that paired very well with the milk stout from foundation it did it was a brilliant stroke of genius on your part. Dude. Oh, no, it was a team effort. <laughs> team effort. <laughs> Don't put it all on me. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, I ate my half. Yeah, so true. Okay. true. Sorry. true. Yeah, so that was brilliant. Yeah. Um, again, we just had a great weekend. Um, we love these, you know, sort of 48 to 50 hour getaways. Um, we're very manageable in terms of the amount of time off of work and um, budget friendly and all of that. I feel, I feel like... Yeah. We're pretty good at that now. So if you have any suggestions of like three to four hour drives from central Vermont, let us know. But we yeah. kind of do, we do Montreal, we do Boston, you know, we've well, done Portsmouth, New Port Hampshire. Smith, we've done, uh, yeah, a bunch of places along mm -hmm. the coast that we're lucky enough that, you know, there's so much to do here in our beautiful state of Vermont, mm -hmm. but we're lucky enough to be able to visit a lot of wonderful places for getaways and experience new places, uh, new cultures, new food and new drink. Mm -hmm. And that was it. So the last place we stopped on our way out is again to kind of fill up on some cans on beer. So there's this little industrial center mm -hmm. that we had been to before, which is where Foundation Brewing, where Bissell Brothers used to be, 
And in just this little complex, you can park once and you can get this, not sorry, you can get Foundation Brewing, you can get Austin Street Brewing, you can get Definitive Brewing, you can get, I'm sure I'm blanking out, there's a distillery that happened to be closed on Sunday, but if yeah. you're looking for kind of a one-stop place to get your cans and things and your growlers mm -hmm. filled, uh, that's the place to go. Yeah, it's like a, it's like an, it's almost like an incubator just for breweries. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess because it's licensed and it's zoned correctly. And so it's just very easy. Like as one brewery gets big and moves out to another facility, another brewery, new startup brewery can slip in and take that spot. Yeah. And um, it's a pretty cool thing to have, um, you know, in a city that's, that has a lot of uh, brew culture yeah. going on. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's nice of the city to support the industry in that way. So, yeah, that's a quick, easy one. To do like you said just kind of you can just park and just kind of walk around the little compound and taste all the things yeah yeah and it was busy for a sunday afternoon probably because it was the holiday weekend but you know everybody's yeah. so nice and just you can just find a place to park you stand in the lines and everybody wants to talk to you where are you from what are you doing oh i've been to vermont before and mm -hmm. it's just you know it's just friendly yeah it so. is the, the brewing community is a friendly community, kind it of like is. the knitting community. I think so. I think so. And I do hope people feel welcome. But yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a great, it's a great thing. And the two things go so well together. <laughs> okay. Have your beer. Have your beer. Yeah. Chill out. Yeah. It's cool. Good. Well, thanks uh, for the recap. That well, was fun. It was a fun. It's kind of nice to kind of run down memory lane of mm -hmm. nostalgia, even though it was only a week ago. Yeah, we'll again, we will have a map. If you click through to the blog. There will mm -hmm. be a map included there as well as links to all the places that we've mentioned in this episode of yep. the video. Yeah, exactly. So check it out. Let us know if you are uh, if you go to Portland or, again, if you have other ideas for places to visit within kind of a four-hour radius of Central Vermont. We would love to hear about that. Or if we've missed some place in Portland that is one of your favorite places, Absolutely. let us know. You can't do it all in 48 hours, so I'm sure there's a lot more we have to explore. We'll have to go back. We'll visit okay. in the warm months. Yeah, exactly. Check out some beer gardens. Good. Thanks for joining us. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. <laughs>